The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School Series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. I am now joined by Jeanette Gautier, who is with BASF, based out of Manitoba. How's it going today? Good. No, we're good. We're good. Absolutely. Okay, so we're here today to talk about verticillium. We, we've talked about it in the past, but let's just, just take a quick step backwards here. What is verticillium? Yeah, it's funny you said we've talked about it in the past we still talk about it being a new canola disease and relatively it is it's a new canola disease to western canada to all of canada actually for uh, canola growing regions it's very specific to brassica species um, so for us the big one is canola um again it's not really new because it was first detected in manitoba about 10 years ago now uh, not quite, but almost there. Um, but that said, uh, we often focus on Manitoba, but it, it is spreading. So we do find it other areas, and I think for other areas it is newer. But I still think it's fair to use that terminology because it is new in some respects that we're still learning a lot about it, it even in Manitoba. Like we, we have so much to learn about this disease compared to something like black leg or club root, for example. So something that we do know about it, though, is its life cycle. So it's soil-borne disease. Um, it starts early in the season, penetrates through the roots, and then uh, grows upwards through the stem, through the uh, water pipes of the canola. And then it does take the entire season to complete its life cycle. And then you'll start to see those microsclerotia we talk about, the little pepper on the outer stem which can shed back into the soil, spread with the residue, and then we're just right back at, at step one the next spring. How long can it stay in the soil? Is there any knowledge there? I think people have said that, again, it's, it's a hard-bodied spore, so it probably has really good longevity. Um, again, it's so new, we don't have great... Um, recommendations in terms of crop rotation, but I would say anecdotally, we do see that same benefit that we would for other dis canola soil borne diseases as well. So even though it's long lived, you're probably not getting rid of it once you have it, crop rotation is a decent way to manage it. And can it, can it have a pretty big yield impact on your final, on your final yield? That's a million dollar question. And I, I think the good news is, is that there is some research being conducted on this. So this is where some of the research dollars go uh, from canola checkoffs. So that's fantastic. Um, interestingly, anecdotally in Manitoba, we do see some people say in bad years, yeah, for sure, I saw a yield drag. And it kind of makes sense. I mean, one of the things that we do see from verticillium is a premature ripening. Um, so kind of lends itself to, to yield loss. On the flip side, we've had some really bad years where another one of the effects is that it, it causes the plants to lodge really badly. And um, I feel like we flexed off 50 to 60 bushel canola. It's not really different. Uh, there's lots of data from Europe where they've been dealing with this disease and oil seed rape for much longer than we have. And they just seem to say that there's variable uh, yield impacts as well. And, and, you know, you talk about, you know, we often think of verticillium just being in Manitoba. It is really across the prairies, but how do you know if you have it? Like, what does it actually look like? Yeah, this is a good one. And I completely agree with that statement. I think we often think about Manitoba and granted, we do have higher pressure here. And then um, definitely moving into areas like, um, you know, Eastern Saskatchewan and into North Dakota as well. But uh, we know from uh, federal surveys that they have found verticillium longisporum um, in every province except for the Atlantic provinces. 
So it could definitely be out there. And it's important to know so that you aren't mistaking it for something else and that you are managing well, what you should be or what you think is out there. So the classic symptoms of verticillium, when you look at a picture and we have some pictures, um, is definitely the stem striping. So you get a stem, half of it's green, half of it's turning brown. Um, if you pull that stem out and you clip like you would for black clay, you're going to see some discoloration across the stem. It's not going to be chunky like it is for, for black leg. It'll be more of a all over the stem. Maybe a starburst is sometimes how it's described. Um, it varies a little bit. In areas where verticillium's a little bit heavier pressure, I'd say it can be darker, maybe hard to distinguish the two. And in fact, even just looking at other symptoms, I always call verticillium the chameleon of canola diseases. I just find that it's really good at looking at other things, look, looking like other things. So uh, especially when you go in earlier in the season, you know, we start to see maybe some of the side branches lightening up. It kind of looks like sclerotinia. Then it starts to turn gray and you're like, oh, I think I got black leg. <laughs> cut your stem, you got discoloration. So I am not embarrassed to say that I don't always know what I'm looking at. So I'm a huge proponent, and I would say most folks in the industry are, if you don't know and you're unsure, get it tested. Lots of labs are offering this service now. Um, if you do want to know what it looks like, though, and just hone your skills, I would recommend waiting until 80% seed color change or even harvest post harvest, that's definitely the easiest time. And the reason is the stems have definitely started. Um, they've moved on from that brown color. They're probably gray. We're starting to get some of the epidermis is peeling back. And you can see that microsclerosion. We have pictures that you can include. And so that, that definitely makes it easier to distinguish from the other diseases that are out there. And we talk about misidentifying quite often, and lots of times it does get misidentified as black leg. Is there any key, like, standout, this belongs to black leg and this belongs to verticillium? Is, is there any giveaway there or not so much? Yep. And this is, I have a perfect picture for this. It's definitely, that's why I love to wait a little bit longer because the pycnidia that you get from black leg on the outer stem. It's more like raised bumps on the outside, a little bit bigger. You tend to get like kind of a bleached area around, whereas the verticillium, verticillium microsclerotia are under the epidermis, peppery. It's just going to look dark. So they do look quite different once, once you get used to them. And again, the stem cross section, take it with a grain of salt. Again, if you can distinguish them, because sometimes they occur together too. Um, the, the black leg definitely was usually more chunky, those triangles that we're used to, whereas uh, verticillium will be all over. But that one's a little bit tough, tougher. I definitely look for the, um, you know, the pycnidia and the microsclerosia on the outer stem myself. Okay. Um, so we did touch a bit on this. Is there any sort of management we can do, though? It, research is still early. It's still early on, but if you find it, is there anything we can do? Yeah, so the bad news, there I go, dig it down there, <laughs> is that we're really not at a point where there's any broad industry standards or standard recommendations for management. The good news on the flip side is that there are lots of research dollars. So your canola associations have been listening to you. And if you're interested to see what some of those projects are, um, you can go to the Canola Council website and check out their research hub, but lots of good things going on um, for third party research and industry also paying attention. Uh, I mean, this is a big deal for us. And so I would say that um, like BSF, for example, we've had a pretty intensive uh, research program that's looking at verticillium and canola uh, since 2021. And uh, breeders, for example, are especially looking for tolerances within hybrids. So lots going on. 
just have to be patient and wait for results. It's always hard to do.